What happened at your work which caused multiple people to quit all at once? Restructure of the way we're paid. What I used to do involved about 40% client interaction, 20% team slash coworker interaction, and 40% paperwork and case coordination stuff. Based on what we do, that means only 40% of the time is technically billable, and there are really sticky rules for what is and isn't billable. So logically, we were being paid on a salary model. Q management saying we can only make money for the time we have that is actually billable. A fourth of the department quit. Two of us on the same day. Story 2. I was in an inpatient rehab facility. It was a wonderful place in Massachusetts. Honestly, anyone in my friend group that I met there and stayed a month with, I still talk to. And pretty much everyone has benefited from that facility and is still sober or has only messed up a couple of times in the last three to four years since. We got a massage every two days, yoga every other day, guided meditations in the morning, equestrian therapy, horseback riding, hikes, went to town twice a week to go bowling, movies, laser tag, skate rink, acupuncture, had spiritual advisors, etc. And this wasn't some sort of Jesus place either. In fact, we never really talked Christianity. Except for the traditions that took place before all the groups in the morning where everyone who was a Christian got together to talk about the Bible. This place wasn't necessarily by the book, and was not based around AA slash NA and 12 steps. Which, in my opinion, was why it was so successful. Not trying to knock the whole thing, but it has never worked for me. Nor the people who were in and out of rehab 20 times doing that type of thing. This place, though, was different. The staff there was amazing. It was some sort of hippie-type place. We got amazing home-cooked meals three times a day. And I'm talking stuff like steak, shrimp scampi, giant salad platters, wings, etc. Best food ever, seriously. Between that and the gym, I gained 30 pounds while I was there which was much needed as I weighed about 140 while there and 170 leaving. The staff was just amazing, all helped us come to terms with who we were, and they weren't all book-oriented. They were just amazing spiritual people, people who you really couldn't be around without being in a good mood. I know that they hired this way on purpose because they seriously had a good thing going there, that I had never seen or even heard of before. Then they cut funding for what they couldn't bill for. All the coolest people got laid off and the rest of the staff that could still work there were extremely irritated. This all took place in my last couple of weeks. Well, I heard from the people who were there longer after I left that basically the entire staff left, except for the more corporate jerk people, and that the entire place had entirely changed within a week to just another rehab place. That won't be of help to near as many people as before. I have a lot to say about these systems and treatments in the US, and this place was a perfect example of how we are all doing it wrong, and then once something good and different is going, it gets changed because of money. Story 3. When I was 16, I worked in the concession stand at a minor league baseball stadium. Minimum wage at the time was $5.15 an hour. This job paid 8 and it was always in the evening, so it was perfect work for a high school student. The only bad thing was our management was terrible. The main manager would throw toddler tantrums about once a shift over stupid crap, like not ordering enough of a specific beer. She did the ordering, by the way. Or running out of pre-cut lemons for tea. One night, the stadium was running a promotion, and it was incredibly busy, easily two to three times the normal volume of customers. We were all working our butts off, handling multiple roles each with absolutely no downtime. Although we all cleaned as we worked, nobody had a chance to do thorough cleaning for the whole shift because of the never-ending horde of hungry baseball fans. The manager showed up three to four hours late, as per usual, and throws the biggest frickin' tantrum ever over the unswept floor. Finally, she announces, Listen up, you lazy jerks. Minimal work gets minimal pay. Everybody is being paid minimum wage tonight because you slobs won't clean anything up. Both of our bartenders and the bar back quit on the spot, which caused a chain reaction. We all took off our aprons and hats to leave. She blocked the exit and was red in the face from screaming. So one of the cooks climbed out of one of the big serving windows where we served customers. So I did the same and most of the staff followed. Bear in mind that this all happened in front of like 200 plus customers. Of course, my final paycheck got lost. So I had to file a wage theft complaint with the Texas Workforce Commission. It's always nice to hear stories about people in management who think they're on top of the world get rebelled against, basically. Like, no, sorry, you're not a king or a queen or anything. You are someone with a slightly bigger hat than us. That does not let you rule over other people and they will revolt. Story 4. Owners retired. They were literally the greatest people. Both very sweet, but kept the place running like a well-oiled machine. They took pretty good care of us and their restaurant. When they left, they gave the restaurant over to their nephew, who at the time was a busboy slash waiter, kind of standoffish. 
He didn't really interact with us too much and was a bit lazy at times, but for the most part did his crap and went home. He seemed okay. Until he got the power of being the owner, that is. He fired four people including two of the four cooks and two of the three dishwashers, literally that same day, on a Friday night just before the dinner rush all because he didn't like their attitude. He refused to allow people to take a vacation that they had already requested and gotten confirmed by the original owners, and would change the schedule randomly without telling anyone and then scream at people when they missed a shift or came in late because of it. He'd refuse to replenish the kitchen until we were literally already out of things, then take forever to put in the orders, and show up randomly and would drink at the bar. Oh, for free, of course, because he was the owner. And then bring all of his buddies to drink with him. Together, they would get way out of hand and grab at women and try to start fights. Within the first month of him being the owner, over half the staff had quit, usually walking out literally in the middle of their shifts after being screamed at. They would basically throw down their aprons and tell everyone else that they were so sorry, but they couldn't do it anymore. After the last cook, this big dude who usually kept the kitchen laughing and running at a decent pace, started crying in the middle of his shift and dropped everything he was doing after the boss came and yelled at him for being too slow and making slop, and then walked out, the rest of us just bailed along with him. Four months later, the place was closed. His aunt and uncle were absolutely furious and devastated that he'd run the business they'd built up for over 30 years straight into the ground. Now, consider, I get that the previous owners were probably great people, but maybe a test run of a new owner, maybe, just to see if he can handle it. I feel like that would have avoided this whole situation. Story 5. I used to work at a McDonald's, and we had a terrible manager who hated a lot of people working there. Everyone else hated him, too, but no one wanted to call him out on his crap and quit. I was the first to do it, because I requested two weeks off in August of that year, about three months in advance. My family likes to plan our summer vacations early on. When August came around, he had my schedule set up for all of August off, except for those two weeks. There was no way he could have misinterpreted my request. When I got my schedule, I stormed into the restaurant, called him out on everything, and then quit on the spot. About two weeks after that, I heard from one of my work friends that five other people had had enough and quit as well. It felt kind of good to be the first. Story 6. I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings for a few years as a line cook. Two different stores, same frickin' pay. It was the type of work where you ask for a raise and they scoff and say, <laughs> yeah, me too. Anyway, I had been pretty dead set on quitting sooner or later. Our kitchen was very small. Most people ended up closing four to five days a week with doubles on the weekends, while still attending school full-time as it was a college town. On Super Bowl frickin' Sunday, a useless co-worker who ducked out in the bathroom most of the shift finally stopped showing up, and in response, the managerial staff delegated closing to my pal Jay. Now, dude was a frickin' delight to be around, hands down, best co-worker ever. Jay had told them that dude being a full-time student, he no longer wanted to be the first in, last out. 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., 1 a.m. on the weekends. They basically told him to go screw himself, and that they don't have any more shifts for him. Immediately, me and one other cook walked to the office and quit on the spot. Buffalo Wild Wings lost four cooks on Super Bowl Sunday, leaving them with only seven full-time students on the schedule. It was a managerial mess. Story 7. At Grease Monkey in high school, they kept scheduling me for three to close. When I applied, I made it abundantly clear that I got out of school at three and would get there at 3.10. About week two, the manager pulls me into the office and says, You've been late every day. When I told him I have school, he said, You need to decide what's important. I laughed as I thought he was kidding. He wasn't. I told him he could let me go if it wasn't going to work, but he begrudgingly let me stay on. He got fired for making butt stuff jokes about a customer while she was in earshot. The manager freaking hated me from day one since I got special treatment because you're in school. I asked for a day off to go to Six Flags about two weeks previous. The day comes and he calls me at about nine and says, Coworker called in sick. Need you here. Now. I told him I was on my way to Denver with the group and that I asked for the day off. He huffed and yelled, Grow the hell up. Get here or you can come get your last check. I said I'll be there in an hour and went to Six Flags. Picked up my last check a couple weeks later and was accused of stealing a coat. I'm sorry. You need to decide what's important? Am I understanding that correctly? Your manager is trying to ask you what's more important to you, your career at Grease Monkey or high school? That, that's worrying. But it does kind of sound like that being a manager of a Grease Monkey is that manager's peak in life, so it doesn't surprise me too much. Story 8. I was hired by the new owners to replace the existing manager. I was under the impression that he was moving on to another job somewhere. So after about four days, I ask him where he's headed and if he's excited. He just blankly looks at me and says, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just training you as the assistant manager. 
right? The look I gave him must have been a great tip-off because he got up and walked into one of the new owner's offices. After about 30 seconds, they were screaming at each other, and then he just storms out of the office, grabs his stuff, gives me the finger, and leaves. Over the next few days, I'm trying to calm things down with the employees. They're not faulting me, but now they have a very bad taste in their mouths about the new ownership. Over about a 7-10 to 10 day time period, my team shrank from 15 people down to 3. I hobbled along with the best I could while we tried to hire new people, but the new owners were offering so little that we had trouble finding people. After three months or so of that, I started to get fed up and overwhelmed. And when the owners started to get on me about missed deadlines, I had had it. We were still only at five people, two of which were brand new and still training. They didn't allow me to refuse work or push deadlines out. They expected the same output as a 15-person team. So after my third day in a row of being berated for missing a deadline that was impossible to make, I quit. I don't think the old manager realizes how much of a favor OP did for him that day. That is great to be given a heads up about that when you had no idea that management was going to pull it out from under you. Or I guess upper management. Because he was management. Obviously not management enough or else he wouldn't be able to lose his job like that. You know what? I'm gonna stop rambling. Next story. Story 9. I'm the manager of a retail store, and I had found out a cashier was stealing product by scamming reward card benefits. I came up with a detailed incident report to present to this employee, and I was under the assumption it was just her. After I confronted her in a reasonable manner, she freaked out and got really angry and quit on the spot. She was using fake accounts instead of using a customer's reward card to get herself points and redeem them for product slash gift cards. So the customers weren't getting the points they are owed, which is a headache for me if they notice and complain. The next day, every other cashier called me and quit. And after thinking what the hell just happened, I found out they were all in on it and were using this lady's fake card on their shifts too. So I'm down four cashiers and I have one left. This same day, my last remaining cashier disappeared for 20 minutes. Turns out she was in the bathroom with another employee doing the nasty. She quits because her dad is a cop and doesn't want to find out she got fired for this. And she also asked me if she should go to urgent care because she didn't take her tampon out before they did it and she couldn't find it. The guy also quit because he didn't care and was moving away. I was down to literally managers only. So the first part is the mass exodus and the last part was just a can you believe this? This must be the only story in this thread where the employees were actually doing something wrong here. Every other story has just been like, ah, management screwed us out of this, offering less pay, that kind of thing. This one? Nope, the employees were all in on some kind of scam. Definitely an interesting reverse on the situations. Story 10. I was working for a very large IT company. Before the tech bubble burst, we had a meeting with our new director and the VP. They were tired of people complaining about things that should be changed at the job and how they managed people. So they sat down 200 of us in our auditorium, and the director said she didn't want to hear any more complaints on how she was running things. And if we didn't like them, then there was the door, and that there was no way we would leave such a good job. Well, there was a mass exodus and probably close to 50 people left within two months. She and the VP were reorged and given zero reports. They were gone after a round of layoffs happened shortly after. Story 11. Worked at a Wendy's and one of the regional managers started running a store because they couldn't slash wouldn't find new managers to replace the old ones. Well anyway, this guy practically ran the place into the ground. Before he started running the store, most people liked working there as it was a good environment. A few months after, a couple of people quit because of him. And one day I roll in at 9 to help open the store and he comes out to my car as soon as I park it. I was 15 minutes early and usually just sat in my car until 9. He tells me, hey, I need to start early because the three openers just quit on me. We managed to get the store open and had a number of people from other stores help run the place until the people from the next shift came in. A couple days later, I hear the full story of what happened from a co-worker. The regional manager is supposed to be at the store at 7 or so, and the opener's 30 minutes later. He didn't actually show up until 8 30. So when the openers, already upset at being at work really early and not being on the clock, saw the regional manager roll in, they knew it was going to be an awful shift and all decided they were done with him. So they just quit right then and there. At least six people quit because of him by the time I left the place. Probably more after me. Story 12. Worked at a data company. The guys in the sales department screwed around all day. They'd literally be in the parking lot drinking beer and racing RC cars. When it came to handling accounts slash clients, they frequently gave away free accounts in order to retain customers and also make their own numbers look good. And somehow, they got away with it. Meanwhile, there were dozens of programmers and database nerds working tirelessly behind the scenes to integrate a bunch of complicated data and make it easy to access via the website. Yearly holiday announcements come around and upper management decides to send the entire sales team to Hawaii for an all-expense paid vacation. 
When the furious devs asked why they were just taking the sales team, the confused CEO literally said, Well, I mean, I guess we could ask the sales team to pick one person from each department who helped them the most this year and take them too. The programmers, engineers, and database people were livid and walked out in droves. Gee, I wonder why the company tanked. Story 13. Several years ago, I worked in a mental health center. We worked primarily with kids. It was time for the center to renew their certification. Instead of keeping up with everything that needed to be done over the course of five years, the proper procedures were ignored. In this couple months before recertification, administration made us sit through a ridiculous amount of training on things that would have been covered in training, such as HIPAA laws and identifying child abuse. Then came our paperwork. Our center encouraged us to do things that aren't exactly covered by Medicaid or approved through certification. For example, taking kids to the park isn't allowed. But guess where they instructed us to take these kids so they didn't disturb the therapists working? I had to go back and edit five months worth of documents to get rid of the evidence. The kicker was that the bathrooms were supposed to have a log of when they were cleaned. An administrator perfectly forged the signatures of multiple employees. I don't think they would have went through that trouble just for a bathroom log. What else were they forging our signatures on? The potential risk of being charged with Medicaid fraud was too high for me. I quit, as did many others. Story 14. School district I sometimes sub in had a big round of hiring. A bunch of building substitutes applied for the jobs, and only about half of them got interviews. Of the subs that got interviews, myself included, the only one who made it past the screening interview was a relative of a current employee. The rest of us subs weren't the right fit. The reason is that there's a substitute shortage and they don't want to lose any of us. Not a single sub who wasn't a relative was hired for one of over a dozen teaching jobs. Many of the building subs aren't coming back the next year. So in trying to keep their substitutes as substitutes, they instead lost them entirely. Great work, school district. Really watching out for those kids. And since I'm doing a commentary at the end of the video, thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day. Or night.